Hello, welcome back to Tactical Tuesday with Johnny Tiger on Star Wars Day, this is May 4th, 2021, and may the force be with you. Now, I thought about doing a, a goofy episode on lightsaber combat, because as you all know, I am the master of all kind of weaponry. From swords to spears to staffs to knives to fists and feet, and I am the master of lightsaber as well. No, I'm not. Okay, I I I just um, I actually don't have a lightsaber prop. Incredible, isn't it? I collect action figures, I collect weapons, but I don't have a lightsaber prop. Maybe one of these days I want to acquire one, but uh. Uh, right now, it's not very high on the to-do list. Um, if I want to buy a weapon, I want one that actually has some practical uses, either for uh, real cutting, real application, or for training. Uh, to spend hundreds of dollars to get a, a prop lightsaber just seems not, not a very uh, uh, good decision monetarily at this point. So today I'm going to talk to you guys instead about one of the most dangerous things you can learn in the self-defense discipline in the martial art. One of the most dangerous things that might get you killed. But at the same time, it is a skill that you need to have uh, to have a basic understanding of. And I, I'm a little bit conflicted about talking about this because this is a skill that uh, is the bread and butter of many Krav Maga styles. What is this technique that I'm talking about? What is this idea that might get you killed and is incredibly dangerous to learn in self-defense? I'm talking about the idea of disarming somebody. Disarming somebody. Now, when it comes to disarm, we generally uh, have either disarm someone with a gun or disarm someone when they have a knife. The other style, other uh, areas of disarm on how to disarm someone with a stick. Now that is where disarm is useful because uh, with a stick or any of the more non-lethal things, then disarm actually can work quite well, especially if you are very good at doing it and you take the person by surprise and uh, you have a definite skill uh, or speed or size advantage. But why is disarm, generally speaking, a really bad idea? And it's usually only something, even for a Krav Maga guy like myself, I would only recommend for disarm to be limited to stage performance and for demonstration, for show and tell. And, and this is actually quite important because as a Krav Maga guy, quite often, when I go to a party, or when I go to a social function, and people ask me, Oh, I hear you teach Krav Maga. Can you show us some Krav Maga? Well, Krav Maga is not like uh, karate, where I can just walk over to the nearby table and split in, in half with my hand. Uh, Krav Maga is not like Taekwondo, where I can just randomly bust out a 360 degree spinning flying kick or some stuff like that. Krav Maga is not like Chinese Kung Fu where I can randomly do a backflip and throw out uh, three kicks in the air. So it's incredibly difficult to convey the seriousness of Krav Maga to people who don't know. So this is where, this is why we put a lot of stock into disarm in Krav Maga. And 
when I go out. If I know I'm going to be put in a spot where I need to demonstrate, I will carry a training gun or a training knife on my person. So when that moment comes, when the person said, hey, uh, show us some Krav Maga, and I can take this out and I hand it to them, here, you know, pretend you are a, a, a mugger, a bank robber, uh, trying to mug me at gunpoint, and I'll show you what we do in Krav Maga. That is where uh, these disarm techniques become very useful. They are uh, very useful as a, a marketing tool, but they are incredibly dangerous because they put ideas in people's head that disarm, one, is possible, and second, is easy. It is maybe possible. Well, okay, it's definitely possible. But is it easy? No, it's not easy. It's incredibly dangerous. In fact, even special forces soldiers say that when they get into a knife fight or a struggle where there's knife involved, they have a 70-80% of chance of getting cut. And these are well-trained, highly trained people we're talking about. Okay? When you ask, there was actually a documentary that talk, uh, had police officers talk about uh, knife attacks and uh, being attacked with a weapon. Um, uh, apparently, there was like 85% of police officers in the U.S. that say they'd rather get shot than get stabbed with a knife. It is that scary when someone have a knife on them and is trying to use it on you. So, I always feel kind of conflicted when I'm teaching disarm, because on one hand, it's a very important skill to have, both for marketing purposes and for you to understand the basic body mechanic on a person. And who knows, maybe one day it might save your life. But at the same time, I don't want to put it in your head that this is easy, that this is your first option when someone suddenly, out of nowhere, come out and swing a knife at your face. And you're going to think, you're going to use your badass Krav Maga technique and pow, hit it out of their hand and disarm them and be a hero and save the day. No. When someone comes at you with a knife, you want to run away. Right? You want to run away. You don't want to try to disarm them. The only time that you might try a disarm, that you want to even think about disarm, is when someone is charging at you with a knife and you have nowhere to go. You have no option but to engage. And even then, disarm is still secondary. I've talked about this before. When you engage with someone who's armed with a weapon, get control of the arm, shut down the central computer, aka hit the head, smash the head, kick the groin, and then neutralize the threat, breaking the arm or breaking the neck or whatever, gouge out the eye. Very rarely will I say disarm them. Why? Because the moment you focus on this weapon, the moment you try to take this away from them, you lose focus of the rest of them. And this is incredibly dangerous because a lot of time, one of the biggest uh, assumption people make is that that is the only weapon. So you go in, the person comes at you with a knife and you get a hold of their hand and rather than shutting down the central computer, you start wrestling for that knife. You start trying to twist it and try to pry their arm behind them in an awkward arm lock position. And the person is dancing around, struggling. They're not going to give you a knife. They're not going to give it to you because they know their life depends on it too. So you are focused on getting a knife from them. At this, at this point, you lose track of what the other hand's doing, which is coming out with a second knife and stabbing you in the side, in the back, okay? And even if they don't have a second knife, the moment you start struggling, wrestling for this knife, and I always say this is actually quite interesting. We don't see that in movies because uh, 
this is what would actually happen realistically, but we don't see that in, in movies. Is when two people are struggling with a knife, the person who has the knife, all they're doing is they're trying to force it down, try to stab it into the person by brute force. Okay, this is incredibly misguided. A person with a knife, the moment you start to wrestle them and try to get them you know, unlock and stuff like that. I'm not going to speak for everybody. I'm just going to say myself. Okay, I'm 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 no one special. I'm just a blind guy. Right? I'm I'm not like a world's deadly deadliest warrior or something. The moment if I come at you with a knife, the moment you try to take the knife away from me, I'm going to kick you in the groin. I'm going to claw you in the eye. I'm going to smash my other hand into your throat. I'm going to yet uh, rip off your ear. I'm going to sink my teeth into your neck. Right? These are things that the song don't prepare you for. It's the amount of resistance you are going to meet when you actually get your engage, when you engage with a person and try to wrestle that knife away. Right? So that is why the song is such a dangerous business because even without any further information, I already showed you how uh, fluid the situation may be when you latch onto that person's knife hand, gun hand, anything can happen. That person can come out with a second weapon. That person can claw their fingers into your eye, grab your hair, or hit your throat, or kick you in the groin, or stomp on the back of your knee just to keep a hold of their own weapon, right? Now, if that is not yet convincing you enough, I'm going to show you guys something that is uh, quite often misrepresented. The idea that you can do a Steven Seagal thing when someone comes at you and stab or stab or slash when they do these things at you, you can chop the knife out of their hand. Okay? You can uh, kick the knife out of their hand. These look really cool in Hollywood movie. Believe me, I have been the knife wielding psycho killer in our training often enough that I can tell you there have been people who know jujitsu. There have been people who are uh, third degree Fourth degree Taekwondo uh, guys. Uh, I have gone off against people who do Aikido, uh, Jiu Jitsu, and MMA, and all that stuff. Every time, doesn't matter what they do, doesn't matter what they know, every time they try to hit the knife out of my hand, either by super hard karate chop, or super hard forearm chop, or super hard Taekwondo kick. It doesn't work. Why? Because that is not how human body is designed. Right? Now, if I hold my weapon in midair, if I if I actually this is why it works in demonstration. Okay? This is why it works in demonstration. Because when you look at knife disarm demonstrations, most of the time the disarm is performed when the knife is static, when the knife is not moving, or at the very least, the knife only has one movement, one trajectory, and the person doing the disarm already know the trajectory of the arm. In another word, it's like it's it's like practicing uh, how to hit a baseball, right? It's so easy when you know when it's just you your partner and your partner throw the ball and you hit it your partner throw the ball and you hit it you might be able to get that nine out of ten times but when it's actually in a baseball game when there's a lot of people around you and the person who's throwing the ball is actually trying to make you miss then it's become very tricky right so when I just hold the knife in midair and let my partner hit my wrist as hard as he can, 
yeah, the knife is going to go flying out of my hand. And I'm going to go, ow, 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 that hurt a lot. And that's going to convince the crowd that, hey, this works. When I go to my partner and stab, I'm saying, I'm going, I'm going to stab you now. Hooey! Stab. Hooey! And then my partner step out of the way and drive down, hit the top of my hand. I'm going to drop the knife. And I'll, ow, 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 ow. That hurts a lot. Look like it works, right? But that is never how a real attack goes. Now, a real attack. Let's say I'm not some psycho killer. Let, let's just uh, throw the serial killer thing out the window for a second. Let's say I'm just a local hoodlum, right? I pull out a knife to intimidate you. I'm not going to hold it in the air for you to hit it. I'm going to be dancing back and forth. Oh, yeah? Yeah? You think you can take my knife? You think I can take my knife? Come on, come on, come on, take my knife, take my knife, take my knife. You know? I am going to be so unpredictable, waving this knife all over the place. And the moment you even look like you're going to twitch to hit my hand, I'm going to turn the knife toward where your hand's going to come from, okay? That's another reason why the hitting the arm, hitting the hand thing is incredibly dangerous. Okay? For you to hit my hand, for me to drop the knife, you need to hit me exactly on the part of the wrist, a little bit towards my hand, on the inside of the wrist, at the uh, very end, very back end of the thumb, right here. You have to hit it right there to bounce the knife out of my grip. And it has to be a super hard hit. If you hit, try to do this, and you end up hitting too high, okay, you're hitting too high, all I do is turn my hand, my knife go right into your forearm. Right? If you end up hitting too low, like hitting actual, actually hitting my hand, then even better for me as a knife holding person, you hit my hand, I drag, I hold, pull my arm back, and the knife gash across your palm or your finger, you lose your finger, right? If you try to hit the back of my hand, you, know, you try to hit the back of my hand, then all I have to do is lower my elevation a little bit and you will cut your own arm off on the blade of my knife. There's a lot of margins for changes, angles for me. That's very limited option for you. If you don't get this hit exactly right, with the exact the right force, it's not going to work. Which makes it a very dangerous proposition when the person you're dealing with is moving all over the place. Moving all over the place. Look at this. It's, I'm, I got the right hand, I got the knife in the right hand, weaving in an unpredictable pattern, and my left hand is in front of it. My left hand is distracting you. On my left hand, it might be hitting you, might be smacking you, might be punching you, might be grabbing at your shirt, right? There's no way you're going to be able to hit this out of my hand, even if I'm blind, <laughs> okay? It's just not going to work. Now let's also talk about the size of the knife. The reason why in training, a lot of the time, the knife disarm look a lot e is feels a lot easier because when people train, they use knives like this. This is a, a plastic replica of a bayonet, a long knife. This is like a, a 60 inch blade, right? Something like this, it's a lot easier to to disarm because there's there's more for you to latch onto. There's more room for air. There's more margin for air. And this is the kind of thing people train with. It's plastic. It's not sharp. And it's light. And it's long. Okay? Which means when you hit my hand, I can't as easily drag this down and cut you. Even if I do drag this down, because it doesn't have an edge, you may not even feel it. 
Ah, uh, you might actually be able to hit it out of my hand. And to the people on the side, it looked like you did the move right, right? Because they don't see that instant where the blade actually slide across your forearm when you do this. They just see you do, and they just see you hit, and then the knife come out of my hand, right? But if this was a real knife, it will already gash open your bicep, right? Now, in real, in, in in reality, the kind of knife you would most likely encounter is like this little pocket knife. Uh, this is actually considered one of the bigger ones, but yeah, most of the knife you'll encounter will be something like this, like just a uh, three-inch blade, maybe two point five. Something like this will be so hard to disarm, even if you hit my hand as hard as you can. I'm doing it to myself. I'm hitting my own arm. It's not bouncing out of my hand. It's not bouncing out of my hand, right? It's hurting. My arm is hurting. My fingers are going numb. But this is not bouncing out of my hand because it's so small. It essentially becomes a part of my hand. It becomes a part of me when I close my finger around it. And for you to try to wrestle this out of my hand, this is so short. Right? It's, this is so short. Let's say you actually get on my wrist. You grab onto my wrist like this. This is so short. All I have to do is flip it around and drive it down into your forearm. Huh? There's no way for you to be able to pry that out of me. Now let's go and look at guns. Because guns is another interesting one. Guns are actually easier to disarm than knives because there's more for you to grab. You don't have to worry about cutting off your finger. But one thing about guns, where a lot of misnomers, a lot of uh, bad information shows you, is again, you can do that Steven Seagal thing by chopping my finger and the side of the gun with your hand, and that will flip the gun out of my hand. Does it work? Well, again, if I just hold the gun is still, if I hold the gun still, and if it's a rubber training gun, then yeah, it works. Why? Because the rubber training gun, you can chop it really, really hard. You're not going to break your own hand. But for me, the person holding on to this, psychologically, I already fear you hitting my finger. Psychologically, I'm already thinking, well, sh I don't want to. I don't want to hold on too too tight because if if he hit my finger, uh, he, nothing happened to him. But I'm going to end up with broken fingers, and it's not worth it. So I'm going to hold on loosely. And when you hit it, it fly out of my hand. Wow, really cool. It's not until you start to advance in Krav Maga, and people actually come at you with this, a real metal, uh, replica. Now suddenly you find that your techniques are not working. Why? Because now it's your turn to be psychologically scared. Now you don't want to chop this with full force because it's metal. You know if you hit it really hard, you're going to break your hand. You know if you try to grab it and you miss, I'm going to pistol whip you with this gun and this is metal. <laughs> this metal gun is going to hurt you a lot more than it's going to hurt me. So suddenly the role are reversed. I'm not scared of you. I got a like metal gun. It doesn't really fire, but I got a heavy metal object in my hand. Go ahead, try to chop it out of my hand. Let's see if your hand break first or my hand break first. Most likely it's going to be your hand that break first. On top of that, uh, I'll mention two more things why gun disarm can be incredibly dangerous and the kind of things that you don't hear about in self-defense. A lot of people say when, you're, when you are wrestling for the gun, you want to put your hand back 
to prevent the hammer from coming down so you so they can't fire the gun okay I demonstrated this before I think if it's a real gun you you put your finger there you put your hand there and they pull the trigger ow 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 this is not a real gun but that still hurt like crazy it's going to snap off your finger okay this was, if this was a real gun you put your hand in the you know, way of the hammer it's going to snap off your finger it's going to pinch your skin just like it just did me and what will happen to you the moment it pinches your skin is you're going to go ow 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 and try to pull your hand away the moment you pull your hand away the person pow pulls the trigger and you're dead right that is the first problem uh, one of the problems with the uh, gun disarm second problem gun disarm a lot of time when people are dealing with gun they'll hit it out of the way and leave it very close to their body they have the idea that if it's not pointing at me then I'm safe not so much okay what happened when you pull the trigger there's a very loud noise bang there's like fire flame and smoke coming out of the barrel you you don't want this to be really close to your head right if this this is close to my ear the person pulling the trigger bang I'm going to be disoriented and shocked I won't be able to keep my hold on the weapon most likely my hand my hair will get singed by the heat of the barrel at the same time huh? so these are things that you don't often consider in self-defense and disarm uh, but are so vital to know because not knowing them not knowing that you can get your finger snap off by the hammer not knowing that the barrel can actually set your cloth or hair on fire when it's so close to you will get you killed when you try to disarm an assailant not knowing that hitting someone in the arm really hard will not make them drop the knife not knowing that when you kick someone in the groin let's say someone's waving a knife in your face and you kick them in the groin you think it's going to make them drop the knife but it won't right that has been done to me before too usually what end up happening I'll, I'll uh, show you guys what it looked like if I'm waving a knife I'm coming toward the person and I'm going to uh, attack with a knife and they kick me in the groin my posture is going to turn into oh like that okay do I do I fall down yeah I go down on my knee but at the same time my knife will thrust forward like a full length thrust right into the person's belly right so unless you know to kick them in the groin and get out of the way really quickly you are going to get yourself impaled when you kick them in the groin because their natural reaction the natural reflex is to fall forward and the arm with the knife is going to come right forward into you so am I uh, after all this am I against the idea of disarm I'm against the idea of thinking that you can disarm so you are okay fighting someone when someone comes at you with a weapon I, I'm not okay with that I'm against that idea I'm okay with people practicing disarm in the sense that I'm okay with people practicing Tai Chi or people practicing uh, 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 fencing or uh, Ayajutsu things like that they're not necessarily practical but they're fun to know and they're fun to uh, show your friends that you can do uh, but the moment that you forget and think that it is practical that it is reality that will most likely get you in a very dangerous place thank you for checking out today's tactical Tuesday we'll be back again tomorrow for Wisdom Wednesday for now have a good night and may the force be with you